I'm a big fan of complimenting people on what they're doing well. So really engaging with them on like, I love how your classroom is set up. I love how your classroom management style is going. I'm really here as a support for you. And how can I help you instead of pointing out all the things they're doing wrong because they're already super overwhelmed. Welcome, Conchita, to our podcast. I told you before the recording, but I'm so excited that you're here. I'm so curious about you and the mission that you stand for and how you got to where you are. So for our audience who may not know you, would you please introduce yourself? So um, I'm Conchita Hernandez. And I have a lot of random roles. <laughs> so I, um, I'm currently, as my job job, working um, through the Maryland School for the Blind and the Maryland State Department of Education, supporting the education of blind students, professionals, educators, parents in the state of Maryland. And then before I was in this role, I was a TBI in the DC public school system. I was a rehab counselor in Nebraska, and I'm originally from California. I grew up in California. Um, I myself was an English learner. Um, I was undocumented, going through public school, and kind of all of that um, entails. So uh, my personal experiences have really led to kind of the way I view education and they, the way I view equity um, and why I'm really passionate about kind of some of our student populations. I can see where you're coming from with that, especially having grown up through the system and watching your family navigate the system, I'm sure had a major impact on you as a child. What got you into the field of visual impairments? Can I ask? Yeah, absolutely. So it did start with that. You know, my, my parents didn't speak English. I had an IP and I didn't get the services I should have received. And so I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. Actually, I was kind of like, I can't really see, so I can't really do stuff. Um, I was really unsure what that was going to look like. Um, so I ended up finding the National Federation of the Blind, and then I got training in Nebraska. And while I was in Nebraska, I had this all these great people, and one of them was like, are you interested in being a teacher of blind students? And I was like, yeah, actually, I don't want kind of this same thing that happened to me to be repeated to other students. And on the spot, my O&M instructor, Jeff Altman, was like, okay, we're calling them now. And I was like, wait, I, I, it's just a thought. I'm not sure. <laughs> yet and so he like talked to the person at the program and he was like all right they're ready like for you to do a tour and I'm like I guess this is what I'm doing um and so I got my master's Louisiana Tech in their TBI program and the rest is history what's been one of the challenges that you faced as a TBI in DC with a visual impairment I think the biggest thing that I think in all of the areas is just people's attitudes, right? So like, I was really lucky that when I was a TBI in DC, I was at one school. So we had back in that time, we had all of our students with visual impairments, they had the option of coming to this public school. So I didn't have, you know, the typical things of like having to go from one school to another. But I think it's, it's definitely the attitudes that people have of like, first of all, wait, how are you doing this, helping your students when you yourself, you know, are blind and low vision and what does that look like? Um, and I was also really young, so I feel like there's definitely this of like, oh, you're so young, what do you know about what you're doing? I think with a lot of things, it's, it's that collaboration aspect. Like I think collaboration is so, so important and you touch on it a lot in, in stuff that you do. And I feel like building those bridges where like, how do you navigate somebody being like super ableist and telling you maybe something like really bad that you're just like, oh my gosh, I can't stand them. But I have to like get over that and learn to collaborate with them because it's vital in order for my student to be successful. And one thing that I learned about you, ma'am, is that you started your own nonprofit working with mm -hmm. students. Can you share a little bit more about that and what your work entails? Yes. Yeah, so I started a nonprofit. Um, it's called METAS. Um, it stands for Mentoring, Engaging, and Teaching All Students. And um, it started off as let's go to Mexico and work with a school for the blind. Um, and so a group of us got together. We're all blind. We're all people of color. Um, and we decided let's go. And we're all professionals in the field as well. We're not just like random 
blind people doing <laughs> teaching. Um, and so we ended up doing that. And then I realized like, if we're going to do this, it's going to be well done. Like we're going to do a curriculum. We're going to figure out how to do stuff. And we just realized kind of the need um, that existed. And one of the things we realized also is in the United States, there is no blindness training for adults in Spanish. Mm -hmm. And also what a lot of people don't know is if you're undocumented, you're not eligible for blindness training, period, because it's state run and it's state funded. And so there's a huge group of people that either just don't have access to it, period, or they just don't have access to it in their language. Mm -hmm. um, and so we started a gr uh, one of our programs is called Cambiando Vidas, where we do blindness training fully in Spanish um, by blind Spanish speaking adults who are professionals in the field. And it's it's been super, super empowering. We started it um, in McAllen, Texas. And the thing that people don't realize about a lot of border towns is that McAllen is completely surrounded by border patrol. So if you're undocumented, you can't leave the city, let alone leave the country. What's been really empowering about it is, first of all, that the instructors themselves are professionals in the field and blind and Spanish speakers. Um, but then also the people who started off as students are now kind of pipelining into like supporting and, and being instructors, which has been super, super wonderful. Um, and then another part of that is during COVID, we started doing webinars in Spanish mm -hmm. um, on blindness topics um, of all different types. And what we realized is that everywhere in Latin America, people were craving this information. It just doesn't really exist. Um, and so we have over a thousand families and contacts in Latin America that we're in contact with, that we share resources with, um, that we... Uh, are able to kind of connect with and um, and it's been super super kind of COVID led to kind of this webinar focus that then led to them being able to access information and collaborate in ways that we weren't before. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe I have not heard about you guys yet. <laughs> if you could give our community one one simple piece of advice to help them take a step forward in assimilating their learners with um, multilingual families. Can you share just one piece of advice? Yeah, I, I would say collaborate with the English learner teacher. Um, they're normally called the ESOL teachers. So learn to collaborate with that provider and don't hand off the student as this isn't my issue, this isn't my issue, but rather we both don't know what we're doing and that's okay. Um, and we're both gonna work together to figure out what's best for the student. Um, and so I think collaboration is is at the heart of moving all of our students forward. Oh, so beautifully said. Can you tell us where we can find more information about Mythas and yourself? Yeah, so our website, it's like a volunteer organization. So our website needs to be majorly updated. I'm going to say that as a caveat. Um, but we have a website that's methusinternational.org. Um, and I'll share it with you as well. Um, and about me, you can just Google me. And you'll find all the random like interviews and podcasts that I've done. Um, and if you you can follow me on Twitter as um, Conchita HDZ. Um, so I kind of do random stuff on there, or you can find me on social media. I'm very open. And if people want to add me on Facebook or whatever, feel free to find me. Um, and I'm on Facebook as Conchita Hernandez and then Legoretta, which is my second last name. So people can, can find me or can email me. Um, and I, I'm happy to connect with folks amazing we will put all that information in the show notes as a, as for emails if you guys do feel like you need to email conchita reach out to us at the team at alliedindependenceonline.com and we'll reach out to her for permission um just as a caveat this podcast will be out for years and years and years so if somebody finds you in 10 years i want to just make sure that it's still okay with you Thank you so much for coming on this podcast and raising our awareness as to the issues that we still have in front of us and helping us to create that bridge to get over them. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. And I, I love being on your podcast. I think what you're doing is fantastic. And we need forward thinking people willing to think outside of the box and in order to move our field forward. So I'm very grateful for you for, for doing that in our fields. Oh, it's my pleasure. 
It's my job to have everybody watch me fail and then I'll just pick my <laughs> back up and we'll keep going. <laughs> Gives everybody else permission to fail too. Yes. Yeah.